Welcome ladies and gentlemen to yet another episode of Little Modular. Today we will make friends with this incredibly useful module by expert sleepers called FH2. It's one of the most versatile and useful modules I have came across in my career because it helps me to bridge effortlessly my three different studio areas which are modular rig, my uh, MIDI controllers, my keyboards, pads, faders and so on, and my computer. The main purpose of this module is to convert incoming MIDI messages to the uh, CV. So you have the USB MIDI right here. By the way, you can also buy an expander, so it also will connect to the uh, standard old DIN MIDI socket. But right out of the box, it's for the USB MIDI, which you connect right in here. You can connect some fader box here, a MIDI controller, you can connect iPad, iPhone, even a Sony PlayStation gamepad or a standard HID computer keyboard. It literally takes all you can throw at it. And in this episode, that's what I want to do. I want to show you what it can do with different things and I will just throw whatever I have in my studio, connect to this FH2 and see how things will go. But before that, let me just show you all the basics. Right here, we have two MIDI sockets. The smaller one is the MIDI C socket right here. That's where you connect your computer to, because we do have this interface right here. But to be honest, it is quite small, but I believe it's here just for general purposes, because Andrew from Expert Sleepers has developed a really handy uh, web-based application. So if you connect your computer to the module through the USB-C like I did right here, then it allows me to use this really user-friendly application on my computer. I can just, you know, scroll through all the options with my mouse and it's just a lot faster and, and easier. And this socket, the standard old one, USB, is meant for connecting all of the stuff I just mentioned. So you can connect your MIDI keyboard in here or iPad, whatever. Below we have eight outputs, so that's where your CV signals are coming from. So if I press a keyboard or move a fader, this will send the CV that I will then connect to my modular system. You have also two inputs, X and Y. You can influence the internal parameters through those two sockets with different CV ins from your modular. And we have the user interface, which consists of all that push encoder and one small button. It's really easy to navigate through all the menus. You just press the encoder, choose a different menu, press it again, choose the option you like, press it again to choose it and so on. If you want to go back one level, you just press this once. Or if you want to go back to the main menu, you just press and hold it for like a second or so and it will just bring you back to the upper level. The cool thing is that whenever you push a key or move a fader on your controller, this will show you what channel it is transmitting on and what MIDI note or you know MIDI CC is transmitted. And that's what I think this OLED screen is for. So you won't have to search through your manuals of all different controllers trying to figure out what key or what, you know, MIDI message it is. It will show you immediately right in here. So you can then input the information in the application and uh, configure the module really fast. As we speak about the configuration, the module is constructed in such a way that it is built upon configurations and presets. Configurations, as the name implies, is all the information about what MIDI is routed to which output. And the presets is the information about a certain parameters that you can choose within the application. And you can store those separately, which is very, very useful. And uh, you will find yourself that after completing few presets and just choosing different configurations for your particular needs, you won't have to fiddle more with it. You'll just set it up for a certain task and then you just leave it and use it with all of the outputs. Another cool thing is you can connect a USB hub in here 
So it is possible to actually connect few different controls and instruments, which is super cool if you ask me. So uh, now let's check out how this will behave in some real life scenarios. I have accumulated few different pieces of MIDI controls through all those years. And some of them are just laying around. I'm not using them anymore for different reasons. And I decided to connect all of them and see what'll happen. I'll try to keep it simple because this module can get really complex. Because besides uh, the main functionality, which is converting MIDI to CV, this could also be an LFO generator, a clock generator. You can generate envelopes and do heaps of other stuff. But we will not be talking about that in this episode. Right now, I just want to show you how flexible it is and what are the basic uses of it. So the first thing I want to connect to this is my trusty Arturia keystab. As you can see it right here, I'll connect the uh, USB here. And I have uh, the first output from FH2 connected to the one volt per octave on my Erika Sense synth voice. The second output is connected to the gate in and I have a third output which is uh, just the velocity information and the eighth output I'll tell you about in a second. So when I press a key on my Arturia key step, so as you can see I have this gate information on channel number two and I have the pitch information on channel number one. Additionally I have a velocity information on channel number three and I have also configured the FH2 in such a way that it sends module information on channel number eight. I'm not sure if you can see it, but when I'm touching the uh, module strip right here, it sends some CV information. So right now, if I connect it to the uh, CV in on, on Erika Sense, this will send some information to my filter, okay? Now let me show you how I have configured that on the uh, application I have told you about. So that's the application. You can open it up from within the manual or from the uh, expert sleepers site. Few important things. When you open it, and you can currently open it only on Chrome, it will not work on other uh, browsers. So remember about that. It will ask you if you allow it to send or receive MIDI. Of course, you'll click allow. And afterwards, you need to choose appropriate ports for sending and uploading from FH2. See, I have many different ins and outs. So I need to choose FH2 for the uh, send MIDI and the listen to MIDI port. If you want to check if everything is in the correct order, you can click this one right here, request FH2 version. And if everything is in correct order, it should show you here version 1.4, which I have currently in which I believe is the last one. One more thing, whatever you change in here and you want this to be reflected in the FH2, meaning you want this to work in the module, you need to click this send to FH2. Otherwise, it won't work. You need to first send it to your unit. So as you can see here, we have lots of lots of parameters, but do not be overwhelmed by it. It's all super logically laid out really easy. Let's just take a look at the first line right here. Okay. We have few columns. We have enable, MIDI channel, note range, type, base output, base gate, CV gate, velocity gate, velocity, all of these other columns, I won't be describing all of them. We will just focus on the basic ones so we understand what is happening in here, okay? The most important thing is MIDI channel. You need to make sure that your controller that you're using, for instance, my Arturia key step, and this channel right here, they are the same. So I have set it up so it's channel number one, okay? And to use the uh, FH2 as you have just seen it, I have enabled the CV, gate and velocity. So all of those three information will be transmitted from FH2. 
but this is just a super basic implementation of it because we have just used four of the inputs and we still have four left to do whatever we want with them. It could send LFO, it could be used for polyphonic duties and so on. So let's see how to set up a polyphonic voice in here. So let me switch to the application again. All we need to do is to again go to the first row right here and just change this to poly instead of mono then we're gonna leave cv and gate and no velocity i just want those two information present then i will choose unison for voice allocation you also have round robin lowest note but unison would be perfect for us and then very important thing is to set up the number of voices in my case it's going to be two voices and again send to fh2 let's see what happens when I press my keyboard, you can hear that besides the send voice and the second voice is just my organ accumulator connected to this VCA, which receives a signal from mats, which in turn receives a trigger from this fourth, as you can hear right here, fourth channel. And the organ accumulator is getting the pitch information volt per octave from channel number three and I still do have the same number eight connected to the uh, cutoff on synth voice so it's all really simple as you can see I haven't used the onboard interface it's just much faster and easier uh, with the application so uh, now let's check out some other scenario okay so uh, we have tried the uh, Arturia key step now let's see what we have here this it's a very chunky old keyboard, as you can see, Big Mama, and it's called the uh, Remote SL. That's what we have right off the box, so I can just play it like I played with the key step. So now I have all of those faders and, and, and coders I can use. And again, when I move a fader here, I can see it tells me here it's transmitting on channel 1, CC number 16. And if you take a look at the application again, down here cc number 16 on the first channel and direct control that's how it is that's how i have set it up so now when i move the fader again the same eighth output is lit so i can just use it however i wish of course nothing stands in the way of assigning different fader like the next fader which is cc number 17 from the same controller and if I send it to FH2 now as you can hopefully see I have another fader sending on channel number seven so now I have two faders and I can just use all of the remaining outputs and assign them whatever I want okay so we had two keyboards we have some gates CV and faders assigned to different outputs now how about a standard computer keyboard when I press a here on the keyboard watch what happens on output number six whenever i hold it or let it go it just sends a gate let's see how i have done it in the application of course it's super simple again by the way you have different sections here that you can enable because it's plenty of different parameters so it's not always comfortable to see them all so uh, you can disable or enable view of uh, certain sections I want to see the uh, keyboard, so I need to click show keyboard. Now if I go down here, you can see HID keyboard. And as you can see, I have assigned output number six to the press release type. And here is where I have assigned the A key to it. And I can just do that for every key on the uh, keyboard. But my favorite application by far with the FH2 is the one that includes good old iPad 2. Uh, you can also use that with your iPhone. Unfortunately, I do not have this adapter from Apple, which you need to buy for some absurd amount of money. Thankfully, I had this old Alessis IO dock, as you can see, that houses my iPad 2, which is fully loaded with some really cool apps that I haven't used for ages for some reason. And I just thought, how about I'm gonna connect it to the Concrete Performer, which is a very cool <laughs> app, as you can see. 
what it allows you to do is to have some nodes like i have four nodes in here and each of those nodes can send a different MIDI information and uh, i have four nodes hopefully you can see it i have this main node right here uh, set it up in such a way that when i press it it sends a trigger information like so and all the other nodes have a uh, different cc messages and as you can see when I move my fingers, the uh, different outputs on FH2 are changing the intensity of the LEDs, meaning it changes the voltage. So, as you can see, I can control many, many parameters with just one or two hands. In my case, it's the organ accumulator, which uh, is modulated by four outs, out number five, six, seven, and eight. And I have output number four connected to the wet dry CV in on my ZDSP. So I'm controlling two modules, a few parameters with just one hand. And it's really simple to do. If we look in the uh, app itself, again, it's the same old trick I have shown you uh, with the faders on the remote SL and on the key step. You just go into the direct control, choose appropriate channel and just choose the CCs, like 10 to 17 in my case. Now, if I go back here to the uh, concrete performer, if I tap the configuration, you can see that if I press one, I have the CC 15 and 16 transmitting on channel number one. Hopefully you can see that. Then if I tap another knob, I have another settings like, you know, CC number uh, 14 or like CC number 16, 17, 11, uh, assigned to X and Y position, for instance. So it's super easy to execute. I also had this other application, which is super useful. And it's like a chord player, chord melodic player, which allows you to play different melodies and harmonies uh, in a very simple way. So, as you can see, it works right off the bat. Right now it is uh, configured to the previous example, so it doesn't make much sense, but it's if I configure it to the gate and CV outs, it will just transmit those messages and I can just play around like I did with the keyboard. So as you can see, I just used all of my keyboards that I had in my studio and it just worked without any hiccup and it was super easy and fast to configure. And that is just the tip of an iceberg because as I have mentioned, you can enable some clocks on it with different divisions. You can have even Euclidean sequencer in there that could be enabled and you can sync this with no problem with your computer and your external gear. So for me, it just became indispensable, be it in the studio or you know during live gigs uh, i'm using this extensively every day seems a bit daunting at first because there's a plenty of parameters as you have seen but in fact it is really easy to use so uh, i couldn't recommend it enough so if you are in the same position as i'm that you are having tons of gear laying around not really you know knowing how to connect all of this stuff together then well there you go that's your solution there will be definitely some more videos on the FH2 because as you could imagine, it'll fit in lots of different scenarios. But for now, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. If you liked that video, if you found it useful, please like it, subscribe. Take care.